what a morning. We're here at Woodlands Lakes first. Really, really cold winter's morning today, but it's nice and sunny. And I'm gonna talk you through one of my favorite methods of all time, waggler fishing for silverfish. Traditional waggler fishing is often an underused method in my opinion, but on them winter days when the fish back away from your pole lines, it's a brilliant, brilliant tactic. Whether you're match fishing or pleasure fishing, you can have a lovely day doing this. But as with everything, there's always a few little things that can make a big, big difference. One of the most important parts of this style of fishing is deciding where to fish. Now, it's closely linked to the bait. For me, the best baits at this time of the year, live maggots and maybe a bit of ground bait. So when you're on your peg before the match, look and think, right, where can I feed my bait best? With your maggots, good conditions, wind off your back or even wind in your face. At worst, you're limited to about 15 metres. At best, maybe 21, 22 metres. So when you're on your box, have a look, right, that's where I'm going to be able to feed nicely. That's where I'm going to be able to group my bait best. And that's where you want to plumb up. One of the biggest mistakes I see when people are doing this style of fishing is trying to fish that bit too far and you spray your bait everywhere. Just come back a little bit and fish where it's good. Bait choice for us today, nice and simple. Starting off with our ground bait, just use Blake's Baits Commercial Masters Pole Mix. The reason I like that mix, it's got lots of expanders in it. You want to be really, really careful in the winter time. Don't try and use anything that's too fish really, too strong. Just go for a nice mix with plenty of expanders in it. Onto the ground bait as well. Before I mix it, when it's dry, I just add a tiny bit of Black Trackix, Black Dye. And all that does is just take the edge off it. It's still sort of a nice dark green colour, um, but it's important. You don't want it too bright at this time of the year just mix it so it's nice and soft and that way a couple of little squeezes by mixing it like that you haven't got to worry about over squeezing it still break up nice small balls that I can fit in my little cat pole to feed them then other baits just some red maggots stick to red maggots at this time of the year a couple of pints nice big fresh red maggots you want fresh bait because the extra size just help you feed be able to group your bait a little bit better and then lastly just a few fluoro pinkies. I wouldn't go anywhere this time of the year without a few fluoro pinkies. So starting off our session, probably going to start off with maggots. I think ground bait's really, really good to attract some skimmers in your peg, but I don't know what it's going to be like to start with. So I'm probably just going to start loose feeding a few live maggots, go from there. If I'm catching a few roach, I might introduce a little bit of ground bait, try and get a few skimmers in our peg. And then hook baits, nice and simple. It should be either a single maggot, double maggot, or a maggot and a fluoro pinky. It can be a really, really good hook bait this time of the year. Talking us through our setup for today, starting off with a rod choice, 11 foot event that's perfect for here. It's really, really shallow, sort of three to three and a half foot deep. If it was a bit deeper, six, seven foot, that's when I'd look to use the 12 foot. Real choice, nice and simple, 3000 Certe. Real line, really, really important for your winter waggler fishing. 015 N gauge, marketed as a pole line, but brilliant on your reels. So easy to sink, really, really nice to fish with. Then going down to the business end, I've just got two tight line stops, the small ones. That's really, really important. You want all of this around your flow to be nice and small, not big and cumbersome. Same with your flow, insert waggler, dotted nice and low, tiny little bites, be able to see all them indications. This one's got the loading on. All I do is I pop that one off and I put what one on with no loading. That way, when it comes to plumbing up, using my little 10 gram plummet, float's gonna land, it's gonna be really, really buoyant. So it makes it dead easy to plumb up. Don't try and plumb up with your float when it's dotted to a dimple because you'll never be able to do it. And then all I do, once I've got my depth right, the plumbing up, just so that my float's out of the water, I just offer it up to my rod, bit of tipex, give it a bit of a mark, and that way I've always got that reference point. That's really, really important. Today, nice and flat calm, so inch to inch or two on bottom be perfect. But if it got windy and the wind got up, it can move really, really quickly. There, I can just literally slide all my shot up and go a few inches over depth. 
you want that option, but I've always got that reference point. Really, really important. Then down to the business end, it's only shallow here, no wind, so three number 10s down the line, it's absolutely perfect. And then just finishing it off nice and simply, I've got a five inch hook length of 010 Engage Pro to a 16 F1 pellet hook. One tip when you're waggler fishing is you want to steer clear of the 18s and the 20s that you'd be looking to use on the pole. You want a nice big hook, nice strong hook. You're definitely going to miss less bites and that's a common thing when you're fishing with a waggler. Just stick to whatever you use on the pole, go the next size up when you're fishing with your waggler and you won't go too far away. In the summertime, you can get away with having loads of float sticking out. Fish are eating, they're really aggressive, so you get proper quick bites. Wintertime, totally different. You want to be able to shot it as low as you possibly can where you can still see it. That's really, really important, that is. So add a few small shots. If you're struggling to see it, just pip one off and it'll just lift the float up just that little bit. But try and get it as dotted down as possible. You'll see so many more indications that way. Being efficient is really, really important, but it's really, really important when you're waggler fishing. So I want to give you a few tips on how to help with that. Now, starting off with my setup, everything's nice and close to hand. And one thing, especially when you're doing this, is having a big rod rest. The fad nowadays is nice little small rod rests. That's perfect when you feed a fishing. But when you're waggler fishing, I want to be casting out, feathering my line, stopping my line winding it under the water to sink it and then just be able to drop my rod. I don't want to be looking for a rod rest because that's just going to slow me down. So I want to talk you through that little bit to start with. So roughly half the drop of your rod, nice long drop, just to aid you with your casting. Cast out, feather it and stop it. What you're looking for when your float lands is your shot and your hook bait landing past your float. And then from that position, I just put the rod under the water and give it a flick and then I drop it on my rod rest. Always cast five, six metres past where you're fishing, give you plenty of time to be able to wind and sink your line. And that way everything's straight between my rod tip and my float. So when I get a bite, I'm going to be able to strike and be in direct contact with a the float. Then the next part is making sure that I've got my catapult nice and close to hand. That way I can feed my maggots. I always like to feed twice. You're going to get a spread of your bait when you're doing this. And then, if my float, my float's in my bait. And once you've done it a few times, you'll get the hang of where to cast and then how, how many turns of your handle you need to wind back to sink your line and also leave your flow where you're going to be feeding, right in your feed. Not this side of your feed, not past your feed. You can try that throughout the day, but it's normally best when you get some bites on this to be fishing in your bait. A great way of inducing a bite, once you've cast out, sunk your line, fed your bait. If you've not had a bite within a minute, minute and a half, just before you wind in, just give it a turn of the handle. And that way it causes the float to go under, pop back up, but it causes your hook bait just to lift back up and drop again. And I think sometimes as it's falling, they spot it and grab it. Don't always feed really, really confidently in the winter time. So sometimes you almost got to tease them on the hook. Right, so we've had an absolutely gorgeous day here at Woodland Sturs. Plenty of bites from all sorts, size of the fish. Little skimmers like this to some lovely roach. We've had an absolutely lovely day here. It's still light, I think. So I'm going to carry on fishing, but I hope you've picked up a few little tips and tricks that next time you go out, fancy doing a bit of silverfish fishing, really really is a lovely way of fishing. <laughs>